Hello friends, welcome to this next video on numerical analysis. In the last video, we have discussed the bisection method. In this video, again, we will go for a numerical problem in bisection method. Suppose you have this problem. Find a root of e to the power x minus x square plus 3x minus 2 equal to 0 using bisection method with an accuracy of 10 to the power minus 2. Okay, so let us see how we, we will proceed with this question. So you basically, you should know these things. You are given this equation, e raised to power x minus x square plus 3 of 3x minus 2 is equal to 0. The first thing to note is, we don't know how many solutions are there and where these solutions are for this particular equation. So all we will, uh, we are asked to find is one root. So what we will do, we will, and, and you note that this is a continuous function. So if we find out a and b such that f of a and f of b are of opposite signs, then in the interval a b there is at least one root. So we are not worried about how many roots are there and which one we are going to find. All we will do, uh, we will just find out a and b. And for that there are two techniques. One is either you draw a graph of the function. If, if the equation looks simple, then you can go for graphing and that graph will give you an idea where the solution may exist. Or in bisection method, obviously, we will go for f of 0, f of 1, we will look at the signs. For example, here f of 0 is e raised to power 0 minus 2, which is basically 1 minus 2, this is minus 1. And f of 1, you, if you compute it, it is e minus 1 plus 3 minus 2, so this is e. So this is greater than 0. So you get in 0 and 1 function has opposite signs. It means that there is at least one root in the interval 0, 1 using intermediate value theorem. So the step 1 of the um, bisection method which is finding a and b is a is equal to 0 and b is equal to 1. Right? Okay. Now we move ahead with the steps. For that I told you in the last video that you are going to make a table. So here you will write your n n is the number of iteration this is your left in, uh, point of the interval and then you will write the ri right point of the interval and then you will write down pn which is a n plus b n by 2 and you are here starting with 0 and 1 this is your 0th iteration and you find out the midpoint 0.5 and the value of the function at 0 is negative at 1 is positive and you check the value of the function at 0 0.5 so you you have to check your function is e raised to power 0.5 minus 0.5 square plus 3 into 0.5 minus 2 this value you have to check and you will see this is actually positive so in the first iteration your root may be in 0 to 0.5 or 0.5 to 1 and that will be decided by looking at the signs you see here 0 is having 0 uh, at 0 the function is having negative sign and at 0.5 it has positive sign so next interval is going to be 0 to 0.5 right and here again you go for the midpoint again you check the value of the function and you will see it is negative and so you will go to the next iteration so now you will replace uh, 0 with 0.25 because both have negative signs so you will have 0.25 and then 0.5 this is negative this is positive again go for the uh, midpoint which is point uh, sorry 0.375 and you will see the value of the function at this point is positive. So next time you are going to replace the number 0.5. So you have 0.25 here and 0.375 here and the value is positive. Again you go for the midpoint of these two numbers. So you see how I am computing these numbers. This is basically the midpoint of these two numbers. So that is 0.25 plus 0.5 by 2. And here, this by this number divide, uh, plus this number by 2, you will get it as 0.3125. And you check the sign of the function, it is positive. So again, you go to the next iteration. Mm, this uh, function here is positive and here is positive. So you will replace 0.375 with 0.3125. So you have 0.25 negative, 0.3125 positive and again you find out the midpoint this plus this by 2 you will get 0.28125 now and again you check the function and so on now the question is when to stop 
so as i already told you in bisection method we use this criteria that when b n minus a n is less, less than 10 to the minus 2 this is the tolerance given in the question you can see with an accuracy of 10 to the minus 2 means when your b n minus a n is less than 10 to the minus 2 so you have to check this quantity so let us do that in the next iteration we have 0.25 here and 0.28125 here and you check the distance between these two and the distance between these two is 0 0.03125 which is greater than 10 to the minus 2 10 to the minus 2 is 0 0.01 so it means that you have to still move ahead so you find out the midpoint again you will get 0.265625 and the value of the function is going to be positive again you go to the next iteration here you have 0.25 negative and this 0 0.265 to, uh, 625 positive again you look for the distance distance here is 0 0.01625 which still greater th is greater than 10 to the minus 2 so you will move ahead find the midpoint midpoint is 0 0.25 seven eight one three again you look for the sign sign is positive and next iteration is 0 0.25 here negative and this point 0 0.25 seven eight one three positive again for look for the distance distance here is 0 0.007 see now your distance is less than 10 for minus 2 because 0 0.007 for sure is less than 0 0.01 so it means that uh, and you, your midpoint is midpoint is 0 0.253906 okay so it means that now uh, actually we will stop here you will stop here and this is your answer this is your answer okay so basically we say that you have to stop when b n minus a n is less than epsilon right no, I think we will stop here because uh, in this step we are getting bn minus an less than tensor minus 2. So this is your answer. This is your answer for the given question. Okay. You can uh, see this is how we deal with the bisection method. Now can you see how many iterations we performed? You have this first iteration second so basically seven iteration and count this also so basically you performed eight iterations you performed eight iterations okay now the question is is there any way to decide before performing the iterations to decide before performing the iterations about the number of iterations okay so basically we want to know in advance how many iterations are required for this particular question if we want to achieve an accuracy of say 10 for minus 3 so this question we are going to answer in the next video this is the question we will answer in the next video thank you